Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rx Games. So today we're going to be revisiting the memory match concept and to put a spin on things what I'm going to be doing this time is matching unlike cards. So we can match an apple to the letter A or the word apple. So unlike before where we were just matching the same sprite indexes, this time we're going to be matching completely different images. And to do that what I've actually got is one sprite index, for example sprite card apple, which has multiple image indexes, for example one is the word apple and the other being the picture of an apple, and what we can do is we can use two comparisons to determine if a match exists. For example we can detect if both cards are of the type sprite card apple, we can determine if both cards are opposite image indexes. So if card 1 was sprite card apple and image index 0 and card 2 was sprite card apple and image index 1, then we know, there we go, we've got a match. So it's somewhat different, but there's going to be a lot of this tutorial that's going to be very similar. So I'm starting off from scratch. Uh, certain things I'm just going to be speeding ahead because there's actually quite a lot to cover here. And I don't want to spend too much time doing this. So I will explain a certain section and then fast forward the rest of it. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comment section below. You can also find the project files in the description. Um, play around with them a bit. So let's begin. I've got card apple, which says apple and it has an apple. I've got card banana, which is banana and it has an image of a banana. I've got card chair, which says chair and has a picture of a chair. I know these are pretty random. I've got card Leo Pluridon. There it has a picture of a Leo Pluridon. And we've got card mouse. There we go. So I'm going to add one more. Let's say here, insert sprite, SPR card, and let's see what image I've got stored here. So here we go. I have got a T-Rex. Let's add him. Okay, cool. So image index 0 is the word T-Rex. Image index 1 is a picture of T-Rex. So let's say T-Rex. Here we go. So that's how I've added all of these ones. So each of them have two sub-images. Center that. Okay. These are all centered. That's perfect. Alright, and I've also got a room here that's just blank right now. Room game world, as usual. So we need two objects, one being an object called OBJ card. That's going to represent the card. And the other one is going to be OBJ controller. So as before, we're going to put this controller in our room. Let's do that now. Uh, objects, controller, put it at the top left. So if we expand our room here, let me get rid of this grid. What we ideally want is a number of cards to the right and a number of cards down. So that's going to fill some sort of grid over here. And that grid is going to be populated randomly. So every gameplay is going to be different. All right. And then at the top here, I'm just going to be drawing some of our global variables that we'll be using so we can visually see um, how clicking on certain cards populates the globals we'll need to make those comparisons. Okay. So let's start with object controller. As before, we need a create event. Let's drag in some code here. And this create event is going to have a few variables, one being global dot selection number. Initialize that to zero. So we need to make sure that we only make a comparison when selection number is two. So we click one card, it becomes one. Click the second card, it becomes two. There's a comparison either succeeds or it fails. Either way, this gets reset to zero again, and so on and so on, just so that we're not making comparisons with undefined values. So next thing we need to do is initialize our array that we'll be using to store the values of the cards being clicked. So in my previous tutorial, what I did was I had a 2D array that had certain elements I'll show you. It was like something like global dot match, and then we had a zero, zero, and then we had a global dot match, a zero one, all right? So in that one, I set the first index to the sprite index and the second index over here to the ID of the card so that we can flip it back if it fails. But this time what I'm gonna be doing is I need a third one, global dot match, all right, zero two. And this third one is now gonna store the ID. The second one is gonna be storing the image index and the first one as usual is going to be storing the sprite index. So right now let's just make everything undefined. Okay. 
And because we need to be matching cards, well, two cards, we need to create a second one here. So this becomes one, one, one. If you wanted to do a match three, match four, match 100, if you want, then you just keep creating a new element in this array. So there'd be zero, one, two, three, four, n, you know, as many cards as you want to match. And then that does increase the complexity of your comparisons. But I mean, the world is your oyster, do what you want. So there we go, we've got zero, we've got one. We're only be doing match of two. So we only need zero and one. Next thing we're gonna need is a global called can select. It's very similar to my can click and variables such as that to disable certain interactions with objects. For example, when we are selecting one card and we select a second card, we don't want the user to be able to select the third and fourth. We want there to be a slight pause while it does the comparisons and then it decides whether it was uh, correct or not, either way, this variable will be reset to true afterwards. So we can only select two at a time. So this is true. Next, we need global.flip attempts. This is just for fun. Every time we click something, every time we flip a card, that's going to increase by one. So you can try to finish the game world in the least amount of flips. So that's how you can challenge yourself to keep trying and trying and improve your memory, I suppose. Then we need the width and height of the grid. So I've actually got six cards. Each one has two sub-images, so that's 12. So if I looked at my game world over here, in our last tutorial, what we did was we had eight wide by three down, and that filled up this rectangle quite nicely. So I'm gonna do that again. So we're gonna have eight cards to the right and three cards down. So that's going to be 24 cards in total, which means that if I've got six cards, each with two sub-images, we get to have two cards of each type. How cool is that? All right, so height equals three, width equals eight. Very good. So next up, we're gonna have um, a little bit of code that might seem a little confusing. It, it's actually not as confusing as it might seem, but what we need to do is populate our grid, our eight by three grid with random cards, but we also only want so many cards. We wanna make sure that for every T-Rex word, we have a T-Rex image so that they can match up so that when we end our game, we've got the same amount of matches. So as I said before, two of each of these sub images. Okay, we're going to do our counters. Apple count equals zero. Then we've got Apple word count equals zero. We've got banana count equals zero and banana word count equals zero. Chair count equals zero and chair word count equals zero and so on. So there we go, we've initialized everything to zero. So we're only allowed to create two of each of these. I'm gonna create a loop that starts somewhere at the top and ends up right at the bottom. And it's gonna be randomly creating an integer between zero and 11, inclusive of those two. And if it hits a five, for example, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, then it's gonna be creating one instance of object card that's gonna be associated with a chair word. That's what its sprite's gonna be. And then this is gonna be one and then it's gonna generate another random number. And if that's three, well, zero, one, two, three, that's gonna be a banana word card. So that's gonna be one and so on. And if it hits, and if it hits a five again, it's gonna do another chair word card. That's gonna be two. And then this one's gonna be effectively skipped. Every other time it generates a five, we're gonna tell it to generate another number because we have the maximum amount of these cards that we are allowing and so on, until all of these are two, and then we're gonna finally exit this controller create, and the player will be able to start the game. Okay, so let's, firstly actually, let's work out our X and Y coordinates, X, X, and Y, Y. So the first one's gonna be the top left, so X, X, I've worked out to be 80, as before, Y, Y is going to be 160. In order to jump out of this loop, whenever we do find a card, so if it generates a three, zero, one, two, three, banana word count is correct, that's what it lands on, and we do increment this and create a banana word card, then we wanna make sure that it doesn't 
create another one. So we're going to have a variable here called found. We're going to set it to false. That's going to be true, which is going to exit the loop and go on to the next random integer. So let's generate a random integer to start with. I want to randomize to make sure that this is different every time we play it. Random int equals I random 11. So I random 11 is going to give us a value between 0 and 11, which is 12, because it includes 0 and it includes 11. Okay, so for 12 subimages, that's exactly what we want. Then here we're going to say 4, we're going to do our for loop, so this is where the craziness starts. Don't freak out, if you don't understand this, I will explain it in greater detail as we go along. var i equals 0, i is less than width, i++. plus plus. Okay, so that's going to sort out our width. Then we've got to do another for loop inside here that's going to do our height. var j equals 0, j is less than height j plus plus okay so there we've got our four loops so for every one across it's going to be doing so many down so we worked out that the width was eight maximum and the height was three maximum so when it does the first width it's going to do three down then it's going to do the second width and it's going to do another three down and so on and that's how it's going to populate our grid pretty cool so at this point we know for a fact that this is where we need to create this card so here we're going to save our card equals instance create and we'll be creating it at xxyy further down on this page we will be increasing this xx and yy so don't freak out it's not always going to be 80 and 160 otherwise those cards are going to be stacking up <laughs> on top of each other you're not going to see any of them so yeah we will be increasing those in a bit and i'm creating an instance of object card that's that blank object that we put together earlier okay so now is the fun bit now we put in a while while found equals false. Okay, and that's not how you spell found. While found equals false, we need to do some things. Let's do a switch on our random integer. And if it's zero, let's create a skeleton. If it's zero, let's see, let's make this one zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Zero to eleven. See, that's that value. So if it's zero, let's create cards that have a picture of an apple on them. But remember, we can only have two of them. So first we need to make sure that we don't create more. So if we hit a zero and we already have two, it's going to do nothing. So that's why we created those counts. So if, let's grab this, apple count is less than two, great, we can create another apple card. Card, which is the instance we created here, that line 41 card dot sprite equals spr card apple next we're going to say card dot index equals so now because the two types of apple one being the word and the other one being the image share the same sprite the only thing that changes between them when generating them is this index remember the word as we see here is going to be index zero and the picture is going to be index 1. So when we are generating an image, make sure it is 1. Bam, right over there. Okay, what's next? So we've got a sprite, we've got an index. We have found something, so found is true. Notice that because of this, it's going to jump out of here, and then it's going to generate our next card. Now we need to make sure that we're incrementing apple count by 1. So now apple count is going to be 1, if this was the first time it hit, and then the next time it's going to be 2, and then this whole case is going to be ignored from that point on. What happens if we generate another 0 and apple count is 2? Well, that's why I'm going to put an else here. And I'm going to say, just redo this. Generate another number. Pretend this never happened, and do it again. Then that's going to reach the end of the switch. Found is still going to be false, which means it's going to be executing the switch again and so on and so on and so on and so on until it has found all of these cards so there we go we've done one half of a pair we need to do the other half which was if we go to the top was the word version of the apple card okay coming back down i'm going to keep these together so i'm going to say if random int is a one so i'm actually going to copy this let's copy this case zero if it's a one there we go. Then if apple word count is less than two, 
The sprite is also going to be sprite card apple. The index this time is going to be a zero because the words were first. It has been found. Apple word count increases by one. Otherwise, we just generate another integer. Cool, so let's do the next thing. Let's copy case zero and case one. So they include the two versions of the same card. And let's paste this down here. So that was zero, that was one, this is going to be two, and this is going to be three. So what was after apple? We've got banana. So the first one's going to be the banana image. The second one here is going to be the banana word card. So let's go back to two. If banana count is less than two, then the sprite is going to be card, it's going to be sprite card banana. The index is going to be one. Found is going to be true, and the banana count is going to increase by one. And then again, randomize if we've reached two. So ignore this completely. If it's a three, well then, if banana word count is less than two, again, it's going to be sprite card banana. Our index is going to be zero because word, word cards have a zero. We have found it. Our banana word count increases by one. Otherwise, if random int is three, generate another number to hopefully create another card because we've got enough of these banana word counts. So let's do that one more time. Let's grab two and three. Let's paste them down here. Let's change two to four. So it's three, four, three to five. What's after banana? Chair. Okay. So now we're creating chairs. Case four. If chair count is less than two, the card sprite is going to be sprite card chair. Our index is going to be one because it's the image. Found is going to be true. Our chair count is increasing by one. Otherwise, just generate another random number. Down here, this is going to be our chair word count. So let me say word. If it's less than two, our sprite is going to again be chair. Our index is going to be zero. When we're generating a sprite that has a word, it comes first. Found is true, and chair word count increases. Otherwise, generate another random number and ignore this one for future. So I'm going to be creating the rest of them really fast. I'm going to be going from mouse pass Leopluridon down to T-Rex. And once that's done, I'm going to run through the code and I'm going to make sure you all understand what's going on here. Okay, so now the last one, which happens to be our T-Rex. That is 10, and this one is 11. So let's go back up to the top. T-Rex, that's supposed to be count. T-Rex count and T-Rex word count. Okay, 10. T-Rex count, T-Rex count increments at the end of that. Our sprite index is T-Rex. So let's copy this, paste it down here, copy our T-Rex count. Paste it down there, change this to T-Rex word count. Increment T-Rex word count by one when it successfully finds one. It is zero. And we're good to go. All right. So down here, past our second bracket, if we scroll up to find out where this one starts, that was at the end of our while. So after we've found a card, we've given it a sprite, we've given it an image index, then we need to do some of the more important things. So after this bracket here, which happens to be our while loop, we need to generate another random number, we need to reset found to false, and we need to increase our yy, because we need to put the next card below the previous one. Okay, so let's go down here, let's expand this a little. Line 229, let's generate another random number. Over there. No oh, indentation messed up. There we go. Found equals false. YY plus equals, if I worked this out before, it was 224 pixels down. And let's get rid of this white space. Cool. So I'm going to draw a quick graphical representation of this from lines 236 to 238 and beyond. If on our first pass we generate a card, there it is. So now we've reached this point over here. We've reached line 227. We need to randomize again 
say we haven't found one and increase our yy, which is going to put us at this position, one down. So we put a question mark. Okay, so it doesn't know what the next card is. Then it's going to be doing all of these lines again, right over here, from line 39 to line 227 to determine what that card is. Then it's going to find it. Then again, it's going to randomize. It's going to reset found to false. It's going to increase our yy to put us over here. There we are. Then it's going to find out what that card is, give it some values. And by that point in time, we would have hit 0, 1, 2. So 2 being less than our height, which was 3. Let's see. When j is 2, less than height, and it's not going to be doing another one. We're going to be jumping out of this for loop and into the for loop at lines 37, which is then going to increase the xx. So we need to do that next. Increase the xx, which is going to put us over here next. And so on. So it finds that value. Then yy increases. To finds out what that card is. Then it finds out what that card is. Then it moves down one. Finds out what this card is. Then it realizes I've reached my maximum height. I increase my width. Find out what that card is. I know what that card is. Now I need to increase my height. Find out what that card is and so on. And it's going to keep doing that until it's reached right at the end of our grid. And in the end, we'll end up with something like this, a 4 by 3 grid. And that adds up to 12 cards in total. Okay, so back to the incrementing of the xx. So once we've done the yy, after this bracket, we need to increase our xx, and I calculated that to be 160 pixels. And we need to reset our yy. All right. So it's going to be doing these for loops and that while quite a number of times until it has generated our grid. If you want to generate a bigger grid, just change this height and this width. But make sure that your counts of all your different types of cards are even. So you've got the same amount of chairs as you do chair words. So those can all match up. Okay, cool. So after we've reset our Y and increased our X, say at the end of all of this, we've generated a really cool grid three by four of all our cards. And there are exactly two of each. Now I do remember someone commenting on my original tutorial saying, suggesting, well, how can he go about flipping all the cards over to show the viewer what all the values are for a couple seconds, then lets them memorize it, for example, and then it flips them back, and that's when the game begins. Well, let's take advantage of this tutorial and put that in too. So all we've got to do is say with object card, flipped equals true. So object card currently doesn't have any properties, but I'm going to be creating a property in it called flipped. So whenever we click a card, flip becomes true, and then the player will be able to see what's on the underside of that card. So if after creating our grid of 12 cards, we cycle through all of them and flip them over, the user will be able to see them. Then I'm going to create a variable called countdown. I'm going to give it three. This is going to stand for, this is going to represent the amount of seconds that the user gets to look at all the cards. But during this time, they shouldn't be able to interact with them. So actually, if we go to the top, earlier I created this variable called can select. I need to actually make it false. Let's generate all our cards. Let's show the user the cards for three seconds. And in that time, he can't do anything. Okay. Then we need to actually flip these cards back over and start the game. And to do that, I'm going to be calling an alarm. Uh, zero, because we don't have any alarms currently. Yeah. Alarm zero equals room speed times three. So our room speed is currently set to 30. And by doing this piece of code here, it's going to execute alarm zero in exactly three seconds. Okay, so let's create that alarm. Add event, alarm zero, drag in some code. Let's make this bigger. Okay, so alarm needs to cycle through all the cards and turn them back over. So with object card, you've got to say flipped equals false. 
Okay. So just like that, all the cards are turned over. We can't see what they are. And at this point in time, we can select. We can start the game. Now, that may seem a little bit sudden. Maybe the user doesn't exactly know how much time he's got. So let's implement that countdown. I'm going to add a step event. Drag in some code over here. And I'm going to say if countdown is greater than zero, then countdown minus equals one divided by room speed. Remember, my room speed is set to 30, which means that this piece of code is going to be executed roughly 30 times per second. So if I want that to correlate to seconds and time, I need to make sure that every step I only decrease by 1 30th. Okay, very cool. Then I'm going to create a draw event over here. And I'm going to be drawing our match array. I'm going to be drawing our number of attempts. And lastly, I'm going to be drawing that countdown. So draw set color, let's make color red, green, blue. And this is going to be 183, 224, 31. So that's slash Rex Games Lime right over there. Then we've got draw text. Let's say 50, 10. This is going to be card type 1. And let's do one of those and those and plus and a string. This is going to be our global match. And that's our first indexes there. Very good. So that's going to show us the sprite index of the first card. So I'm going to copy this two more times. Remember each card. Remember for each card we need three pieces of information. So 0, 1 and 2. This is our sprite index. This is our image index. And lastly, that's our ID of the card so that we can do things with it later. So let's actually say card sprite index 1, card image index 1, and card ID 1. And let's copy this, paste it down here, change this to 350, no, 400. Let's give ourselves some space. Don't want things overlapping. Then actually these need to be different. 10, um, let's say 25, 40, 10, 25, 40. Very good. This is card ID. This is card sprite index 2. This is card image index 2. Actually, let's say card. Yeah. Let's change this around and say card 2 ID. Oh, that makes way more sense. Card 2 image index. Card 2 sprite index. It's going to be 1, 1, 1. Let's get rid of those. There we go. So card 1, card 2, those are our values. Then these need to be 1. Okay, cool. So there we go. We've got both cards. Then let's draw our flip attempts. Draw text. Let's do this at 700 by 10. Flip attempt. Some space plus string global dot flip attempts and make sure we've got enough brackets. Very good. Next, let's draw our time. Draw text. Let's put this at 950 by 10 and say countdown. These, one of these, a plus, a string, countdown. There we go. Cool, so that's going to be going three, two, one, and then the user will be able to click stuff. So just like that, we were able to see the values of these properties. So now let's jump into the meat of potatoes. We're going to be going over to object card. So right now, object control is done. It is in our room and ready to roll. So object card, let's have a create event. Let's drag in some code. We need to initialize this flip variable to false. 
we need to set its image speed to zero because we don't want to be flipping between those image indexes. Okay. Next, let's make some stuff happen when we click on a card. So mouse, left pressed, dragging some code. So this is where the fun happens. Of course, we only want to do stuff if the user is allowed to select. So global.can select. You can put equals equals true if you want, it doesn't really matter. So if we're allowed to select, then another constraint is we want to make sure that we only are interacting with cards that are that are backside up. So if flipped is false, yeah, let's change this to equals equals true just for so that we can see exactly what our values are here. So if flipped equals false, well, it's now flipped over. We can see what it is. So flipped is true. Our global dot flip attempts increase by one. Our global dot selection number increases by one. So if it was zero, it becomes one. If it was one, it becomes two. Now we need to save data of the card we've clicked on. So remember we had that array. Well, let's put some values in there. Global dot match. And we need to grab the global selection number to make sure we are grabbing the correct first element of that 2D array. And it's going to need to be minus one. Because remember, indexes start at zero. Then the first index of our second dimension is going to be the sprite index. Because we're an object card, we can use its predefined properties. And let's copy this twice more. This one is going to be image index. This last one's going to be ID. That's going to be zero, one, and two. So there we go. We've grabbed information of our first card clicked. So there we go, we grabbed information of our card. Now at this point in time, we don't know if this was the first card or the second one. So we're gonna assume that it could have been either. So at this point in time, now we need to say, well, what happens if it was our second? If it was, we need to do some comparisons. If global selection number equals two. Now if you're using, so now if you're creating a game that has match three, then obviously your selection, this is going to be three. Okay, so if this is our second selection, well then, global.count select equals false. Let's disable selection for a little bit so that we can do these comparisons. Let's compare these cards. So, like I said, in order for a comparison to succeed, the sprite index has got to be the same. So for example, they both got to be of type sprite card apple. Then the second comparison is going to be making sure that their image indexes are different. Because if they were both pictures of apples, then because we're matching pictures to words, that wouldn't be a match. Whereas if they had different image indexes, that would be a match. The word apple matches the picture of an apple. Okay. So the first comparison, if global match zero zero equals global match one zero. So if our sprite indexes match, well then we continue. Here we do the second comparison. If global dot match zero one and remember this one must be not equal to global dot match one one. Okay. So if those image indexes don't match, then that means we have got a correct pair. Make sure these cards Are face up because they match. Now they should be faced up already, but let's just make sure anyway. So with global match zero two, see that's that ID, so we can use it here. Triptych is true, and with 
they'll match one to flip to equals true. Remember those are those IDs. Then we need to reset our selection number. So global dot selection number now becomes zero again. We need to reset our comparison array which we can actually grab from our controller, I think. There it is. Paste it in over here. And let's let the user select things again. So he can move on to making his next attempt at finding the correct pair. So what happens if the second comparison fails? Well, then it's not a match, unfortunately. We need to call an alarm, which is going to be showing these images for a couple seconds, and then it's going to be flipping them back. So the user is going to have a chance to now remember that while he has made a mistake, Perhaps if he comes across one of these other cards at some other location in our grid, he knows exactly where the pair is. So alarm zero is going to be called by room speed. And here you can determine how many seconds. So I'm going to say 0.5. So he's got half a second to memorize what cards are in those locations for next time. And I'm going to copy this else, because if the first comparison fails, it's going to be doing the exact same thing. So now let's create the draw event for this card. If it's flipped over, so we can see the image, then we're going to draw sprite index xy. Otherwise, I'm going to do draw sprite again, but instead of index, it's going to be zero. Sprite is going to be something called SPR card back, which I haven't, in which I haven't included just yet, but it's just going to be the back side of a card. So if it's not flipped, we're going to see the back. If it is flipped, we're going to see whatever sprite and indexes. Remember, we set those up in our controller. So now let me go and introduce that back side. There it is, card back, open. Doesn't have any other image indexes, just zero. So SPR card back. And center that. So at this point in time, we've actually completed everything. I'm going to be running through this one more time from start to finish, just so that you understand how things work. So we have our game world, and in it, we just have our controller and nothing else. See, it's all blank. Here at the top is going to be drawing the values of which cards we've selected, and as well as how many attempts and the countdown. When our controller is created, right over here, it's going to be initializing our selection number to zero because we haven't made any selections. It's going to be initializing a 2D array with all the undefined. This is going to be holding our card number one choice and our card number two choice. We're going to make sure that the user can't interact with any of the cards. He hasn't started flipping anything, so that's zero. His grid size is a three by eight. We're initializing the count of all the different types of cards that can be created. We are initializing the first X and Y coordinate. Then from lines 38 all the way down to lines 238, so it's 200 lines right up there, we are going to be filling up that 3 by 8 grid with exactly two of each of every type of card. Okay, so basically what we do is we create a random integer. So here we have our two fours. That's going to be generating our grid. We create a card instance. There's going to be a blank card instance. It doesn't have an image index or a sprite index. As long as we haven't found one yet, it's going to be switching on that random integer. So if this integer generates a zero, then it's going to be going into this case, which corresponds to an Apple image. As long as we have less than two of those, it's going to be setting one up. 
Then it's going to be skipping all of these, all of these. And it's going to be coming down here. At this point in time, found is going to be true. All right, so if we go back to the top, our while loop only keeps executing while found is false. So that's going to break out of there. We're going to be in our for loop again. It's going to be creating another random integer. Found is again false, increasing our y. Then after that, then it's going to be executing the next iteration of this for loop, creating a new card, going into our while loop. It's going to be doing that and so on and so on and so on until it's created exactly two of every different card type. And as it goes along the way, our X and Y is being increased so that these cards are being placed at the right point. Then after we've populated our grid, we're going to be flipping them all over so the user can see them. We are starting our countdown using these pieces of code, giving the user three seconds to look at all those cards. And as soon as alarm zero expires, they're going to be flipping back over. The user is not going to be able to see what they are anymore and he can start selecting. Our step event is going to be handling this countdown. It's just for visual representation. It doesn't actually do anything. When this countdown equals zero, this alarm would have elapsed by then. So that means the user will then be allowed to click things. We've got a draw over here. Like I said before, this is going to be drawing all of our variables just so that we can see. It's a very good idea to draw your things out as you are programming things together just to make sure that when you do click on a card, you are grabbing the correct variables from it. And as you can see, those are spaced out nicely. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. We are accessing the correct elements of that 2D array. So let's jump back into the create into lines 42. So this is going to be creating a card over here. Okay, so this is going to happen 12 times. We're going to do line 42 exactly 12 times. So let's look at what an object card is. A card consists of a flip variable and an image speed of zero, so it doesn't flick it through. It's going to be drawing its state. If it's flipped, show us the picture of that card. If it's not flipped, well then show us this card back representation of it. When we click a card through left pressed, if we're allowed to select, if not just ignore, if that card hasn't been flipped over yet, it is now flipped over, our flipped attempts increase, our selection number increases, so if it was 0 it now becomes 1, this is our first selection, if it was 1 it becomes 2. Either way, we are saving the data of the card we've clicked on. I'm using global selection number minus 1 to set it to the exact right index of this global match 2D array. We're saving the sprite index, the image index, and the ID of that card. We'll be using ID here to manipulate the card later. If it was our second selection, then here is where we do comparisons. So firstly, prohibit the user from selecting any other cards. Do the first comparison, which is based on sprite index. That's at 1, 0 and 0, 0. If that passes, do the second comparison, which is based upon image index. Now these have to be different. So 0, 1 and 1, 1. If that passes, it means we have found a match. So just double check that these are flipped over. After that, our selection is back to zero, so he's making a new selection. We are resetting our comparison array. He is allowed to select, and so on. He carries on doing his next selection, and this event is executed again. If the second comparison fails, well, then call an alarm zero, which shows the user the card for a little while before flipping them over. If the first comparison fails, we'll do the exact same thing as if the second comparison fails. So let's create alarm zero, and it's going to be doing much of the same kind of thing we see in here. So I'm actually going to be grabbing all these lines. Let's create alarm zero. Add event. Alarm, alarm zero. Drag in some code. So unlike when both comparisons succeeded, these comparisons fail. So make sure both cards are flipped back over after 0.5 seconds. Then let's reset our comparison array. Back to undefines. Let's let the user select a new card and let's make sure that his selection is back to zero. See? So the success of a comparison and the failure of a comparison is just the exact opposite. Okay, so there we go. So at this point in time, I'm going to save everything. We've actually got a working memory match game that matches 
upon based upon different images that have some sort of association. So let's play it and see what happens. Hopefully there are no errors. If there are, we'll just solve them as we go along. So here we go, the countdown is going down to zero, we're seeing some things, and we can start. Okay, so we're clicking and nothing's happening. We need to actually make sure if we've given the card object a sprite to work with, otherwise our left pressed event isn't going to work. So let's go back to the code, yeah, our card. Let's give it a card back, just to initialize it with some sort of sprite. Then let's save and run again. Okay, countdown's going down. We can see some things, they're going to flip over. Now, let's see, chair. Okay, cool, things are working. Leopluridon, there's an apple, chair, Leopluridon. Banana, apples. So here's a T-Rex and here's a T-Rex at the bottom left. If I click these, they should match. Oh, but they didn't, hmm, now that's a problem. That one says six and zero, and then it's got its ID. If I click this one, oh, also six and zero. That is odd, they're definitely not the same image indexes. So let's go back to our code. Let's see, left press, let's skim through this. Save data. Oh, look at this. We're using sprite index and image index, whereas in our controller, let's go to the controller. When we're setting them up, I think we're using Variables called sprite and a variable called index. Okay, cool. So we need to use sprite and index and not sprite index and image index. There we go. That should resolve that problem. Cool. Okay, save again. And run. Okay, it's counted down. There's a layer player down. There's a layer player down. So we'll start with these two. There we go. Three, zero. And there we go. They matched. So they stay up. Pretty cool. Banana, banana. Oh, wow, another lucky one. Great. Apple, apple, no. Banana, T-Rex, banana. Banana, banana. That'll work. What do we got? Apple, T-Rex, chair, apple, apple, mouse, chair, T-Rex, T-Rex, apple, le pluridon, T-Rex. Oh, uh, there we go. There's a T-Rex. A chair. There's a chair on here somewhere, wasn't there? There it is. Chair, chair. Another T-Rex, there's a chair, apple, le pluridon, chair, 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 mouse, I haven't seen a mouse or not, there's a mouse, le pluridon, this was le pluridon, one of these was le pluridon, there he is, mouse, mouse, apple, apple, T-Rex, T-Rex, well done everyone, in 56 attempts we were able to solve the memory match card game. So it is a little bit harder than matching on just images alone because we are taking another level into account. So I hope it hasn't been too confusing, and I hope I've been able to help you guys out. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. If there's anything you don't understand about it, I mean, we did go through quite a bit of um, serious code here. If there's anything you didn't understand, just put it in the comments. I'm sure I can help you out, or someone else that has been following my series can help you out. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like what you see here, as well as many of my other videos on display, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. You can check out the cool reward system I've got going. Some supporters get access to tutorials like this one a couple days before everyone else. Others can get access to the betas of my games or even get my games for free. If you're unable to contribute in that way, I do appreciate you sharing this channel with your friends or anyone else that you feel could benefit from my videos. You can follow me on various social media networks, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, things like that. You can find the project files straight in the description. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.